So I was selling in, in units and then... Because that's when it started. People elevating. used to come in for the white label. I used to say, yeah. how many boxes you got of that? They'd be like, bro, I've got 200 boxes. I'd be like, bro, I'll buy all of them. To stop anybody else getting them. To, to run the monopoly. To, to run there. the monopoly. And, that, and that's the way I built up City Sounds. You see what's going on here? You see what's going on here? This and, is Intel. And, and, and those were the golden years because what? Matt would come to me. And then Nikki would be over, obviously out, over at uh, Black Market be like, how many did Ray buy? He bought all of them. No, no, no. Next time when you come over, make sure you save. And then it got to the point where <laughs> man would be having to save a box to share for everybody else because <laughs> yeah. I was buying everything. Killer, 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 official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. Here we go again. Killer Keller Podcast live and direct, Central London. Or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, desire to be by design. We're on the street here. Subscribe, be part of the journey. If you're a fan, follow, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. That's what we do. And if you want more, you've got a television app free. Download iPhone, Android for all your sport and art. And it's free, free, free. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. <sighs> He's arrived. Fire chopper. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Uh, a legend is in the building. Dread Recordings. <laughs> Black Market Records. New band, new music, new episodes, new world of adventures. Um, but we're going to take it back to go forward. Oh my goodness, it's not often you have an OG in your neck of the woods. Ray Kiefer in the building, how are you, my brother? I'm good, Paul. I'm good. Thank you so much. I know we've been trying to make it happen for so long. Um, and I'm glad to be here and I'm blessed to be here. So thank you very much. What a treat. And it's funny, we, we jumped in straight away. We got on the phone talking to old school dudes that were breakers and you, your history is so deep within hip hop as much as, mm. as you know, the, 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 the drum and bass sound. I mean, you go back, 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 back to, to London Posse days, don't you? DJ yeah. Pogo and such. 85, uh, I, was, I started doing parties in Colchester, um, bigging up Smelly. Yeah, that's uh, bigging, up, bigging up Greg Holbrow, who passed away now. But the, one of the piece. first gigs I did... Big gigs I did was at Les, uh, Woods Leisure Centre, 1985, and that would have been with, um, uh, that was with Poco. So in them days there, man didn't even know how to mix. Tony Seeger, a geezer mm -hmm. from um, our sides, um, he taught me how to mix, but it was Stephen Bain, one of my good friends, Bainey, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. a sprayer, breaker. Yeah, yeah. old uh, boom, boom, used boom. to go back in the old days. So he was my catalyst and he was my right wingman from day one. And we've maintained a beautiful relationship. He's always been doing our designs mm -hmm. and, and has carried on. Uh, Damon from Paper Graveyard uh, passed away, so mm. Steve took on that. But yeah, I mean ingrained into black music from the early, early. days. Uh, Soul Train. I was just, you know, we were we were young youths lost. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I came from Colchester in my book. I'll I the Essex crew, come yes, on. Yes, the original Essex Author crew. as well. Can I just add that? Thank you. Author as big, well. Big, big enough, um, my co-writer, Dave Jenkins. Mm. That was a great achievement through lockdown as mm. well. And I, and I just think as artists, we grow. Mm. And actually, I was gonna, I was saving this for, for the camera. So, <laughs> bro, you need to teach me how to spray <laughs> because I got it in me. <laughs> but I just, I don't know where to start. And I guess now that the kids are older and I've got more time, self development. Oh. I've been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot of that because at, when, when you're in it and when you're doing what you're doing, you don't realise what you've achieved until mm. now. You look back and you just think. Mm. Wow, well, we've done a lot. Yeah. Well, your your l lineage comes from uh, the, the street culture. If anyone was to epitomise, there's a, only a handful. You're one of those people that Thank epitomises you, what universally we now know as street culture. It's it's rare. And it surprises me that you haven't touched graffiti before. I know some people out there that are watching right now, they're just, you know, wait for the line-up outside. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll teach Ray Keith how to do a bit. <laughs> yeah. It's good, you've got more time. And, yeah. and, and you know the value of the... These core skills within the culture, right? No, and I think I think that's what's important uh, for 
street culture, young culture. I feel there's a bit of a gap and I feel that that with, you know, with, with, with the likes of TikTok, it's easier to be famous and everyone wants to uh, get that five minutes of fame. And, and it's, Q jump as well. And, it, and, it's, and it's watered down because there, there's, they're, they're losing the soulfulness inside it. Mm. And that's what we're here to still maintain, to still pass down, mm. to still do, you know, and that's nice. I mean, listen, I, I'm not knocking it because that's the medium of today. You mm. know, like when we started, it was mm. real to real massive eight track cartridges that you put in the 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 um the car and then it went to cassette and then it went to dat tape and then it went to dub plate and then it went to cd and now you can airdrop things <laughs> on your phone <laughs> man came to my studio the other day and well i'll just airdrop it to you yeah and i was like yeah, yeah. and he's like yeah ping and it's just there <laughs> the so, mastering with the mix everything yeah. just dumped it. but i i get that and you have to absorb and you have to be able to be a chameleon and change with the times because otherwise I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now but there still needs to be some soulfulness and I guess that's what that's a big catalyst what's missing but but the default of that is which they'll learn very quickly is they'll be here today and gone tomorrow that's the problem it Whereas is, yeah. most of us, like your good self, mm. like, like myself, yeah, right. like the, most of the electronic fraternity, whether mm. it's uh, uh, Jungle, whether it's D&B, whether it's Garage, whether it's Dubstep, mm. wh whether it's hip hop, whether it's reggae from this country or whether it's um, UK house, mm. it has managed to make a mark in this country mm. and all over the world. You know what's interesting about that? Because you're right, there is a 15 minutes fame of it. It doesn't matter what genre, whether it's DJing or anything, and beatboxing, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't hold weight if you haven't got your foundations in the ground. Um, if we take it, take it back to me coming into the, to the game, my introduction was the record stores because those were the social places where you can kind of, you can move and dip and move with the people that just happen to be passing through. It's almost like the, the, the center of attraction. And, and then, oh yeah, but that's X, Y, Z. Didn't realize that. Well, when's the next gig? And then you start getting into that kind of realms and then you're performing and such. That was an era, wasn't it? Real Black era. market, city sounds. Um, mm. those, those were the golden years for me. Um, and, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from buying records off of, you know, I've got that ability to A&R tune. You put 10 tunes in front of me and I'll pick three or the five that even on the B side. And that's what Groove Rider was good at. Mm -hmm. That's what most of the DJs would find that tune and make it an anthem. Because a lot of those tunes were not anthems before they got played. Mm. So you, hundreds of thousands of people raving. And I think, yeah, definitely that's missing. But I'll tell you what's good. There is an underground uh, culture going on of record store days and record store fairs. I would like to see more of my um, peers at those because I seem to be the only one yeah, yeah, yeah. like at them at the moment. Real so talk. take note, you lot. <laughs> meeting the people, selling the records, talking to your yeah, fan base, yeah. talking to people just in general. I've had a fantastic three... Um, Three things I've done. I did the uh, Overshadow Night. Um, I also did um, Billy Bunter's um, mm. The Rave Story. And then I did the one at Lost Horizon, which was just uh, Saturday. I I'm sorry about the names, but mm -hmm. to me, they, they've got their brandings, but I forget, forget what they're called. So I apologise. But those record fairs are putting something in that's good for the fan base direct, I still sell records, books, USBs. It's, mm, chance, it's a mm. chance to meet people and it's a great vibe. And I think... So there's a renaissance going on and you're, yeah, you're going and also and checking repressing. it out. I've got a big up night force. Chris, my mm. gosh, mm, mm. this guy's come back like some like some prophecy. He's, my <laughs> man's come, come over and he's like, here's a bunch of dough. I'm taking the masters and I'm selling I'm selling the records. Who do you want to master the records, Ray? And he hasn't just done that for me, he's done that for about 20 cats. That's incredible. And now he's got a distribution company and do you know what? We've all been knocked, bro. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I've I've had to fold my label several times because of you, you, you know, I'm still going 30 mm. years later, you take the peaks and the troughs. Absolutely. And, and, and it's hard to mm. be an independent label to still have that direction not to sell out. For me, it's integrity is everything. Yeah. And You're and, the shopkeeper. Yeah. And, I, and I'm the quality control. That's it. And I've seen a lot of labels start with good intention but end up on the bandwagon 
because they want to be popular. And I would say to any young produ producer, record label, is you don't need to follow the crowd. You need to swim upstream because mm. that's what gets you noticed. Mm. That's what you're different. That's mm. why I'm different. That's like what Mickey Finn quoted. When you heard a man on a tape pack, you knew who it was. Yeah, oh, it's so true. The identity. When you hear Moose, Moose alone. Just like, whoa, whoa, I was whoa, with whoa, him whoa, 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 at whoa. Jungle Splash the other day. Like, it, it, we were battling against the sound system. It was low. It was it was grimy. It was mm -hmm. back like the nineties. But you know, we rolled out. But what I'm saying is that professionalism. He still cuts through. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I've got to big up any any MC. And I guess I've realised this by going out now and seeing new MCs of what they actually do bring to the table. We we are like um, we're we're like shirt and and, and, and trousers. We're a, we're like a suit mm. because they know how to mix. They know how to blend. They know how to listen. They know how to actually take that on board and roll through. Mm. Like the other day, I, I I did a two and a half hour set, and um, I ended up playing by myself. Um, but when you have an MC there and an experienced MC, mm. it just enhances to goes on with what happens. Who, you know? who most favourite uh, new MCs at the moment? You know, oh, there's everybody. a load in there. Uh, but I, I work, I work <laughs> really yeah, everybody, person. anybody yeah. that's a name from back in the day. Yeah. But the people that I work most with, I guess, and the latest is I worked with GQ. I did um, mm. uh, a D and B classics for Bridge. Nice. That was an E one. That we we live and I was playing vinyl. Moose Navigator. Navi. You know um, I was with Shabba a couple months back. Mm. Um, I I actually did one of the last shows in lockdown with Skiba and Shabba uh, for Jungle Cakes, and that was that was amazing. But you know like. Fun, fearless, you know, like we just we just all blend. Fearless is a G. Yeah. I, love I, I did that I guy. did a set with Wiser the other day on my nice. radio station. Yes, uh, big up Thames Delta. Uh, they've Proper done G, she... they, they've done some amazing awesome. things on their platform, and I'm grateful. Uh, they've given me a chance to do my my dreadcast and my blueprint show. Um, but Wiser was on. That that was a great experience. I said to her, "Are you ready? Because I'm 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 gonna." I'm going to stick it on you. Yeah, like, I'm going to pack some heat play. on this, yeah. Yeah, and she just rolled with it. Yeah. You know, and that's the best way. I'm actually playing for Wiser uh, 2024 because I believe that it's good to put something back into the community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and, brilliant, bro. No, man, yeah, sometimes it's go. not just all about the dough. We, Yeah, we, we take the dough, we do the dough. Of course, we have to survive, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, for every couple of corporates, you've got to put something back in the ghetto. Put something in back in the pot. Yeah. For That's for that for that seed to mentality. sow for that for that you that wouldn't potentially see you or can't travel. Mm. I mean, I went to West Wales the other day and I played in some field with like three hundred people maybe, mm. but it was and I and I did the same thing um, uh, in Manchester a little while ago because I think it's important to oh, yeah. play at them places and. All right, maybe you're breaking even. All right, maybe even sometimes you're losing. Yeah. But the gratification and what that brings to the table with the universe, it spins mm. round in another way. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I also think like as people that like so you and me that really, really appreciate. We, we're from out of London, you know. We really appreciate being a in a in the mix, being a part of it, and knowing how hard it was in the beginning to even be a part of any sort of art form. You know what I mean? That that had sustainability and you were able to, you know, so, I'm so grateful for it. And just to give that a little bit more, just do that thing. The gods are watching, you know, you know? hundred percent. But you're a G, bruv. Like, <laughs> your career has been amazing. Like, yeah, so you're just telling me about the Rocksteady crew and how you started. Your your history is, is ingrained in, in, in British street culture. And obviously... Uh, America for hip hop was the holy grail. Yeah. We look back at that now. That was the way we identified. For real. I mean, if it wasn't for all of those early cats, um, and and I guess I realised that ten years ago when I played in New York and Public Enemy came to see me. Play. Oh, you, oh, hold on. <laughs> They did what? <laughs> <laughs> Hank Shockley came to see me play. Oh, and I was, I was like, stop I, it. yeah, I was like, what? And and, that, and when the brother introduced me, he go, yo, man, this is my brother from PE, man. I was like, PE, and I was on the decks, and I was like, it was like a typewriter moment, and then yeah, 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 ping, yeah. brothers and sisters, no children. I don't know what this world is coming to. And I looked over, 
And it was him. And I was like, Brian, he was like, yeah, I've got your records. We've become what? good friends now. Really? Yeah, and we went, we went out to dinner. He, he messages me, uh, he messaged me about the Dread documentary when the Heads documentary came out because they obviously did a reboot of that. Yeah. And he's been a great inspiration. And his struggle has been like our struggle, but, but in parallel across the pond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a little bit older than, than myself, but, I mean, looking up to those people and, and seeing the lights of, you know, the greats like LL Cool J and all of these people that we looked up to, you know, Eric B and Rakim, mm. you know, like just looking and listening to them tunes and the soulfulness of soul, rare groove mm. and jazz and disco and Motown mm. and early reggae and, and dancehall and... It was a melting pot for it us. Just kind of came together. Hip hop. When you see these old school videos of like LL and Dougie Fresh and all these guys, you know, young and green and keen to just they're, they're vivacious, really like almost over enthusiastic. But there's an urgency there, that urgency of wanting to get out of this, the, the the world that they're in and expose this new art form. I don't think anybody had a clue how influential, even the Amen Break, God, like even that being transferable across genres, no one had a clue. I sampled that from Mantronics, um, King of the Beats. And then I, um, with, with my engineer Gavin, I programmed it in a way because I wanted that loop to roll bah, 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 and then go on to the mm. next break. And I was, I'm, I'm an old school hip hop DJ, mm. so I was using a lot of breaks before anybody else. Soul Pride, um, Lynn Collins, Bobby Bird, you know, all them early breaks. Mace, the Maceo break, the one yeah. that, that, that Fotec used, you know, that's got Ugh. the ring to it. Because all of them breaks, you know, Soul Pride, they, yeah. they i am be saying these names now and they'd be like, what? Um, but that was our history. That was mm. what made it different. When I used the Yes Yes break, the, the, the t Tink, Tink tank break, mm, like mm. the way it loops, because I wanted to be different. Mm -hmm. I w and even when you listen to my early production, I have to thank Groove Rider for playing my remix of, um, I just done a bootleg remix of uh, Orbital and I gave it to him. Bro, he smashed it wherever smashed he played. It. Big and, that, and, that, and, and that in yeah. itself, you know, the, 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 the demigods, you know, the dark and the light, mm. fab and groove. If it wasn't for them, mm. you know, going to rage, doing what they did. Mm. You know, before I used to go and it was Spectrum, then Land of Oz on mm. a Monday, then Rage came on a Thursday. It was life-changing, bro. Fuck. I was in there the other day. Um, I stood in there, I was with my friend, I was like, blood, I, was, I came to this club when I was 16 years old. All my friends were uh, having a good time and happy and I was just drinking water and I would be raving and listening to the DJ, looking up and taking notice of every single beat, sound, yeah. waveform, coming in, absorbing the bass and thinking. Yeah, yeah. It's like the first time I heard Donna Summer, I Feel Love, Patrick Cowley, I was 12 Dude, years old. you just gave me goosebumps, bro. That, bro. It yes. was that when I heard that when I was in my dad's garage because yeah. I was a bit of a tear away when I was <laughs> a kid. And I got grounded and I was in the car, I was cleaning one of the cars. I heard it come on radio. Even listening to Radio Caroline, oh. Oh. listening to Tony Blackburn. Come on. My, Promoting black Big music. Big up Tony Prince as well. Come on. Oh. All, yeah, from DMC. Yeah. Used to watch them man hard. That's how Radio I met Caroline Tony again, Seeger. Yeah. That's Bainey took me to mm. go and meet Tony Seeger. He was a DMC DJ. Mm. Used to mm. do the mixes. And I went to Havy Hill one time. They came to pick me up. I didn't know how to mix two records. And then he was teaching me, he was teaching me. He even clicked me around the head with the mm. record because I wasn't getting it. They left me for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Mm. They went out, I think they went to get a coffee or something. They came back and I'd done my first mix. Because when I was playing in I the old that. days, I just, I just used to fade. <laughs> and then I didn't come out of my bedroom for three years. I remember the, 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 uh, the Brown brothers, there was Chris Brown, Aaron Brown, Andy Brown. Andy Brown would come to drive me Back in 88, 89, we mm. used to go to Astoria. But then I was I was DJing in my room. I was cutting, I was mixing, I was scratching. And then and then one time, it must have been 87, <laughs> not even going into 88, 87, I was around my friend's house. It was a house party. And uh, his name was, um, oh, God. It just, it came in. Um, 
Leslie. Le- Le- You're Les- doing Le- well oh, today, bro. You're on fire with Le- these Le- names, Les was it. letting me DJ in his house. <laughs> his, mi- his missus there at the time was Gail and Blood. I'm not joking. One deck was that side. One deck was this side. And guess who was in the room? <laughs> Alex P was in the room. So Alex P and, and another guy from the Crazy Club were there. And he looked at me and, and I was mixing from that far away. And he went... You mix like Paul Trouble Anderson. I didn't Whoa. even know who Paul Trouble Anderson was at that point because Ooh. I'd never listened to Centre Force. Obviously, my friends had got, uh, were wow. recording the tapes. And then my friend Tracy was a hairdresser, took me to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I was supposed to go to Crazy Larry's, but I never made it. Two weeks later, she was like, listen, you need to go to um, play. And I played at um, the club next door to Astoria which they used to do the Breakfast Club, which was Crazy the cra- uh, crazy Larry's. Yeah, that's it. Crazy yeah, Larry's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played downstairs and I got the residency for um, uh, one, one of the biggest nights of uh, 88 and even now that's uh, come out, the, the Crazy Club. Mm-hmm. So I was there and I got the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday. So they said to me, right, we're going to give you, and this is how it happened. I played upstairs. No, I, I, sorry. I was in this, uh, yeah, I was in, um, I played upstairs in the crazy club yeah. and basically Carl Cox was downstairs and upstairs was packed because I just played all everybody's favourite tunes and the place was popping mm-hmm. and I saw Fantasy on the same day because I was buying records at Vinyl Zone. Stop So picking up. Big, uh, picking up Jazzy M because uh, I used to go there and I used to buy from him and Julian Jonah. Julian Jonah always used to sort me out tunes. There was another dude in uh, music uh, power called Anthony mm. and he always used to sort me out with the tunes. So I used to get the freshest Exclusive, cuffs. Straight, yeah. And straight into the club. Straight, straight into the team, played the tunes Whoa. and then they called me into the office they went, right, you're going to be playing the Crazy Club on a Friday, you're going to be doing a story a Saturday and then you're going to be doing Limelights on Sunday. What? I mean, if this isn't cutting chops, I don't know what is. That is that was your playground. That was your creative. that was my learning curve, and that, yeah. and that was where I learned with all the greats. And then obviously, I went on to 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 do the nights at Legends that yeah. they used yeah. to do yeah. with 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 uh, Fidenzi and all that lot. And I was like, bro, I was twenty two years old. I was I was just. The chosen one. You were getting the f- freshest tune straight off the back of the lorry, straight into the club. These got you, and also just sorting out all my pals because I, 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 I had, I was working at City Sounds, and all my friends that were coming through. So let me name check a couple of them. Come on, drop them. So, so the, my main people that I sorted out was uh, Ryder. And then Frost, and actually Frost, <laughs> Frost came out of nowhere. Said, Oh, you sort me out all the tunes that you sort out Groove Rider. And he popped out of nowhere one time I was playing at Busby. He, he just up came up and he up and said, I'll see you in the shop next week. And, I looked over. and, uh, and Brian G, my right hand man, my wingman. And I Come said to on. Brian one day, I said, Brian, I don't think Frost really likes me. He goes, right. He goes, Ray, <laughs> Bro, Frost loves you. But he never showed me no emotion. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah. came in, took the records and went. <laughs> Obviously, Mickey Finn. Obviously, okay. Kenny Ken. Oh, those the, those dudes there. Fabio used to come in. Um, Frankie Valentine. My God, Frankie Valentine. This guy, one of the original originals. There was Frank and T. They used to come in. Daniel and Rochelle. Matthew B. What? Um, all of these people. Crazy. DJ Rap. Like L. T. J. Bookham. Um, all of these people came into the shop, and it was you know I would make sure that. And this is who I was looking after. This is the cubby hole that was going. It was Pete Tong, Cole Cox. It was the Mafia. So you had um, wow. Eddie Gordon. You had um, Simon Dunmore. You had the guy from Bob Masters from Sleeping Bag. Um, like you just so there would be ten men that would be getting. Blood, one of everything. So if I bought anything off the van, I would automatically be buying 10 copies. Assigned plus, straight to them. Uh, stru- assigned straight to them. But then I'd be giving it to my people. So mm. I'd be buying 20 copies. And I, I'd be getting my balls busted. Are you sure you're going to sell these, Ray? But because I was selling in, in units and then... Because that's when it started. People used to come in for the white label. I used to say, yeah. how many boxes you got of that? They'd be like, bro, I've got 200 boxes. I'd be like, bro, I'll buy all of them. 
to stop anybody else getting them. To, put, to run the monopoly. To, to run the monopoly. And, that, and that's the way I built up City Sounds. You see what's going on here? You see what's going on here? This and, is Intel. And, and, and those were the golden years because Ooh. Matt would come to me. And then Nicky would be ov- obviously o- over at uh, Black Market be like, how many did Ray buy? He bought all of them. No, no, no. Next time when you come over, make sure you save. And then it got to the point where man would be having to save a box to share for everybody else because <laughs> yeah. I was buying everything. So everybody would have to come to me. Obviously, there'd be certain things that the underground used to get, yeah. but everybody used to come and check me, John, from real to real, because you know what? Cash was king, blood. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I'd be paying yeah. them cash yeah. there and then. Yeah. And my boss would be like, are you, are you sure about this? But bro, come Thursday, Friday, the shop will be rammed. And I did learn a lot from him. I played one tune, 20, 30, 40 hands up. You, you sold a box already. Mm. You were buying them for £1.50. You were selling them mm. for a fiver. And you already had like a subscribe a subscription of people that were just off giving word them of straight mouth. away, yeah. And before that happened, your word of mouth was that tape back came out or that weekend you went raving. What's yeah. that tune that Groove, Groove Rider played? Dun, 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 dun. B-side. And then obviously, do you see what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, and totally. then man... There's no Shazam back in the day. It was even no, just literally exactly. that. No, <laughs> was singing to you. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I know that tune. <laughs> but you know, and then we had the whole bleeps era, the house era. Yeah. That was groundbreaking. You know, my palette and my, my our knowledge was so enriched by... You know, what you know, KLF, what time is love oh, from geez. from from tune, you know, GTO pure to mentasm to Shalom, Dude, I'm in love. You, oh, Do you know like when oh, you listen to these you know what? You're just taking my emotions back to that time. I played at um, oh. Clockwork Orange um at uh, at Printworks and I and I was I play I say warming up. I was headlining, but I looked at it, it was warming up. For one of my heroes, which is Mr. C. Bro, I was crying oh, on the decks, you Mr. know. C, I was sweating and crying at the same time because <laughs> we lost a lot of people. And when I hear them change, yeah, I'm I know, like, I never. But I guess that's the same for the people that what what we passed on. Yeah. Sometimes I forget what what we've done, but we're still yeah. humble. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I feel yeah. like we just started. Yeah, yeah. Like now, playing with my live band, learning how to play an instrument, yeah. um, singing, yeah. playing the drums. Looking at, um, I just came back from America and I, I went to, um, and it was a beautiful moment actually. I, mm. I went to um, Prince's uh, compound. You what? <gasps> Bro, and I'm not joking, it felt like he was next door. Like it was like a, quite a heavenly moment. And I went into their studio and I'm like, this dude, like he built a studio the size of a, of a, a, a basketball court. So, but it was like a hexagon. So each hexagon is a studio. And then he's got the master studio. Sounds like a nuclear power plant. Yeah, that it actually looked like that. <laughs> really? I don't know if you've seen, if you Google no. his building, really? it actually looks like an industrial building. Really? And it's like each room was designed. So you got acoustics, vocals, guitar, piano, backing vocals, um, saxophone player and then you've got him in the middle then you go into the hexagon and there's speakers all the way around so you could actually even have a rave there and then I went into 42nd Street which he rebuilt the nightclub that is in his film mm, mm. the Purple Rain, rain uh, Bro club. I was just wow. like and then I saw the Grammys and I saw the cabinets and I was like it would be nice to write some music and win something to to be British and to be to to have been able to have that impact. So I was looking now and I'm thinking, maybe we can do that. Mm. Maybe that's something we can we can achieve. That maybe it's going to be singular or maybe it's going to be a collab. Mm. We move better in numbers can now. Numbers, so yeah. and, and even with the likes of you, mm. I feel there's a new wave of of contacts coming through. So it it doesn't have to be an individual. It can because mm. I I think I think. And I'm speaking from my own personal experiences. We should have been a lot further than what we should have, but we weren't educated how. We never went to university. We we were young guys, working class, mm. off the street, mm. who kind of done it. Um, the, that's always been the way, though. Then that's always been the way. It's the way we rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, but but I don't, but I, but I think where we missed out was because other labels had that structure. Mm. 
But obviously they commercial commercialized it and they're now signed to majors, which is fine. But at the same time, I feel like we still have something to offer from an A and R yeah. point of view. Because you guys from a you, development point of view. Jungle Early Doors refused to bend to yeah. rules and what protocol of, of major labels. Well, 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 I think some of it is is the destruction of the game the game players b between each other because yeah. there was no unity. And I and I think that was that was quite hard to swallow, brother. Really? You know, yeah. It, like, we Elaborate should have been... more on that. Uh, that was interesting. Yeah, we we should have been more unified and mm -hmm. we, should have, we should have looked after each other okay. a lot better. But what it ended up doing was every man was running for himself. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the majors snapping at your heels. Then they would take some of the, some of the icing off the cake. Mm -hmm. But I've always stayed with integrity and I've never sold out. Mm -hmm. I've never jumped on any no. bandwagon. I've managed to invent and be proud of my own sound mm. and that now be worldwide where people would go, oh, well, that's out. That's dread. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Ray. Absolutely. And, and, I, and, and for, to come out of it with something for myself um, and to have influenced 30 years of artists, mm. you know, with the likes of Serum, Blade Runner, Voltage, mm. just to name but a few, Danny C, mm. like all the dudes that we bring in. Even the new school, the old school, some go, some mm. stay. Um, amazing artists mm. like um, Conrad Subs mm. and, um, you know, um, Hybrid, mm -hmm. uh, DJ Hybrid that have gone on to, to, you know, like seeing those, what they can do. And, you know, we're gatekeepers. Like mm. Mickey's a gatekeeper. Mm. You bring people in, you open the door and you, and you let them fly. Mm. You know, I've never really tried to hold on to anyone. You ask for a little bit of loyalty along mm, the way mm, mm. and just remember, blood. Mm. And if you, even if you don't remember, it's cool mm -hmm. because God and the universe always finds a way to bring it back, to centralise it to you. Mm. And um, and I just, I've tried to help people. Some people you can't help. Mm. Some people it's difficult to help mm. because it it's just the way it is. Mm. Or they're not supposed to come with you at that time. Mm. You know, I never got signed back in the day. I, I did. I was a prolific remixer, producer. I used to get a lot uh, left out a lot of the raves. Um, I didn't play um, some of the raves, but you know what? My music spoke volumes mm -hmm. because you would be drawing my tunes in the dance, which is a, you know, it's it's that's a multi-dimensional artist. Because if you're if you're not DJing, you're producing. You're not producing, you're bringing out the records. If you're not bringing out records, you know what I mean. There's so that's the beauty of drum and bass. It kind of it lent heavily on sound system culture, but it also, again, just going back to the how it was brought through, that there was no let up on um, it, it, it hell bent on doing what it wants to do, and you can't. No label can dictate. Major label can dictate what it, what it does. It's no. it's un, it's its own force, and that's why it stood the test of time for so long. Now. Well, I believe with the with the lights of night force now, and with the lights of what we've got around us, we can all eat a slice of the cake. Mm. You have to have good people around you. Mm. You have to have people that you trust, mm. and that way, you can a and r have the distribution from a major. Mm. Um, and I, I've got to touch on this. It's a little bit like politics. The people that, that, that are running the country are not necessarily linked to the working class. So they don't no. think how we think. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it's mm -hmm. like to pay a bill. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it's like to lose something. Yep. They don't know what it's like to have the bailiffs at your door. Yeah. They don't know what it's like to think, well, I'm not going to buy that top today or that trainers today because mm -hmm. I've got to pay the gas bill, the electric bill. I've got to put, I've got to, my youth's got to go to college. They mm -hmm. need something. Mm -hmm. I've got enough to survive. I've got enough to, and we shouldn't be living like that. No. We should be living, there should be no starvation in the world. You, there should be no war, but we know that. Mm -hmm. War makes money. Yeah. Drugs makes money. Pandemics yeah. makes money. Yeah. Have working class people run the country. Mm -hmm. And by that way, you're going to eradicate that silver spoon, like, I'm all right, my pal's all right, mm. I'm bringing my, my pal's yeah. in from, from from all the top dogs and keeping that that upper class bullshit running. Because sure? the same thing's happened in the acting game now. Since well, yeah. the pandemic happened, the, it's opened up a, do a lot of more doors for... Uh, a multicultural society where you see um, gender friendly and more yeah. people on TV, and yeah. that's what we need. Because we we're talking to an actor here as well, here by the way, isn't it? Like you don't know. Well, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're definitely getting to that. An, aspire, an aspiring actor. No, yeah, but again, another art form that I want to pursue because 
I think when we were growing up, there was a lot of things that were bestowed on us from culturally that was like, no, you can't do that. Nah, that's kind of not... not well, the rules are free now. This is free. Oh, actually, sticking, sticking on the previous subject. So how does that, how does that correlate um, from a drum bass slash music industry point of view, the working class of, of, of the scene? How does that correlate? Because you you mentioned it from a referral of um, of I guess um, hierarchy from a drum and bass point of view. Cor- like, oh, when we were talking, yeah. no, I just think I just think when when we came came from uh, the streets, mm-hmm. what we should have done ideally, mm. and what we could have done was basically done what hip hop done. And everybody helped each other. Mm, mm. Everybody done a feature, and everybody then had a distribution company. Because I brought a lot of man in, mm. and not and and some man did not come back for us. Mm-hmm. So that's what my point was when uh, Phil was okay. at Phil was at basement. Right. It, there was there was opportunities that came mm. that we could have done stuff with majors. But we needed to have almost like a broker mm-hmm. because no one trusts no one. Mm-hmm. So by having a broker, i.e. Night Force, because mm-hmm. he's a broker now. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I've linked him with a few people. He's he's now grown in, like in, in, in into almost a a, a, a a corporate but still independent yeah. company, yeah. looking after the likes of Asen, House Crew, Nookie, myself. Mm. You know, uh, re-releasing amazing back catalogues mm. and people getting paid mm. the second or third wave through. And Crazy. now now you're able to to um, to enjoy the fruits of your labour because mm. a lot of people didn't get paid. Um, I worked with people that I had things happen to me, you know, distributors going bust, getting knocked for your dough, oh, um, personal Crazy tragedy, era. personal tragedy when my mum passed away and, 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 and the label folded and, you know, the label went down, artists lost money, but I apologised to them. I was like, look, we, when we win, we win. When mm. we lose, we lose, mm. bro. Mm. You know, and I got a big up, I got a big up one of the original Kings of the North who was, I would say, one of the first early businessmen and and that was DJ SS. Come on, SS. You know, formation. Old Titania what, what he, well. Yeah, what he, Ooh. yeah, obviously, behind yeah. every successful man, there was, yeah. there's a successful no woman. Question. Tanya, we love you. Yeah, we do. UMC, Absolutely. fantastic. Um, and there was a lot of women behind the scenes that are unsung heroes. There's a lot, and I mentioned that in my book because I felt that we needed to talk about that. And, um, you know, Caroline from Unique, Sarah from... Groove Connection, just mentioning mm, a few, mm. that that um, that, that had the, the world in their hands. Do you know what I mean? And and ha- and did help the journey along the way. Um, unfortunately, you know, things don't always work out, and people leave, and 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 nothing lasts forever. I, I'm I'm so gassed that the label's thirty years old, bro. Mm. Um, we haven't been. We haven't always so been consistent. Good. It's crazy. No, we haven't always hey. been consistent. But I've managed to have a imprint and a, and a blueprint to keep going and to have an integral sound. Even like the lights of New Cats, like Traumatize, um, you know, Diligent Fingers, his <laughs> remix of Chopper, um, Serious. you know, Alchemist, mm. um, Ti, um, you know, like. Critical impact. I mean, these yeah, guys, hard. you know, Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, Big up Blade Runner. You know, you know even All Serum that. with their own labels now, their yeah. own imprint, King of the Rollers. Yeah. It's Voltage. beautiful to see that. Yeah. But we need to hang on to the legacy of Jungle. Yeah. We need to hang on to the legacy of. Because once it goes, it can't come back yeah, like that. Integrity. Yes. But there are a handful. There's a lot of cats living off of the integrity of jungle and I would question whether they are really putting something back in or whether they're just taking it for themselves. But time will tell. Time will tell. Because that's we've been truth. here for 30 years. Let's see how yeah. long you last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Do you know truth. what I mean? And I believe and I believe mm. that they have to integrate more. Mm. When a man calls you a phone, answer the phone. When mm. a man sends you a text, you know, 
It's I'm a firm believer of that, bruv. Really if someone like... rings me, bro, I'm ringing you straight yeah, back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, not only unless you're a bit wonky and I've got to text you first. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes you've got to do that because I believe... I don't want to waste negative energy. No. I can't waste time on people. You know, sometimes people take things the wrong way. Maybe they're busting too much... You know, they're smoking it's too much long. or paranoia or whatever. It's but long. I fly straight, blood, and I'm yeah. I'm I'm trying to mm. be like Ron Seal, do exactly what I say on the tin. It's not gonna be baby. on your time. I'm not gonna put the tune out when you say, when you think, because I think there's a, a misunderstanding of everybody wants to get I'm gonna get left behind. Or if they feel like they've got traction. FOMO, FOMO, like just the fear of like 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 blood, I'm being here. Look, do you know how I'll be honest with you. Even with my agency, I'm not scared to say it. I have to fight harder for my place now than ever. Mm -hmm. But I'm still fighting. And, and no door. I'm always going to get doors closing. No, Ray, you can't do this. No, you mm. can't play there. No, you can't do this. No, you can't mm. do that. People got this, mm. people got that. Bro, I'm blessed. 30 years of dread next year. The universe opened up. I've got a night happening in the XOYO. Mm. I'm in negotiations with a few other clubs. I've got a massive night happening in Bristol. That are, that lo the lineup. It's at Central Warehouse. I can't say too much, Woo! but it's all happening in March. Wow. Blood. I'm playing with my band at an iconic spot in the London. The band, the band, the band, the oh band. Gosh. Oh my gosh! So you know so what? So sick. There's so many good things to be blessed for. Yeah. I'm I'm happy for my my four children mm. that um. My elder son, Aaron, my second son, Jack, my two daughters that live with me, Mia and Lola, and I'm blessed with my health. Um, we work hard at that. That's probably the hardest thing. Your health is your wealth. Yeah, you did, and then there was an encounter. You, you suffered a heart attack. I did. Um, um, that was a very difficult time 10 years ago. Mm. Um, perspective, isn't it? Yeah, perspective. And, and also, you know, I was, I was with my ex-wife for 23 years, um, there was a lot of difficult moments. I didn't put a lot of, I didn't put anything in the book about that and that's not right to do that because that was the journey, a personal journey between her, myself and my family. Mm. Um, and uh, listen, any DJ who has been around for this long mm. has had a lot of trials and tribulations. 100%. I've lost a lot, I've gained a lot, it's cost me a lot. Some of it's very selfish. And some of it's very hard. Every day I roll the dice. Mm. I'm still rolling dice mm. now. Mm. Some things come through, some things don't. That's what you want to hear out your heroes right there. That's the real shit. Thank you. I, yeah. I just, you know, like, it's not easy. Um, you're, you're dealing in a bottomless pit where mm. everybody's clambering for the same thing. They're either playing for free, playing for cheap, yeah. undermining what they're actually worth yeah. for that five minutes of dancing to their own tune. Good luck with that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we want we want to see kindness. We want to see beautifulness. We want to see link ups. We want to see like like even today when I come here today, it's a blessing, mm, blood. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're right. and thank it's you. For no, me, man. Like, it's very important that we tell our story. That mm. we inspire the next mm. generation. That we inspire the next cross gender, gender, black, white, mm. you, you, whatever color, shade of white, brown, or black you are, whatever gender you are. We need to change things. Music is a healer. Um, people is the key, mm. you know, and it's people like us that change things, mm. people like us later on that can force change, that can make change, that can do certain things because, you know, no one teaches you how to, how to be... How, no one teaches you how to be famous. No one teaches you how no. to deal with, with money. Um, and also, at that time, I was going through so much, like... Bro, I don't even know. Some days I didn't even want to wake up. I, I, I didn't want to wake up. Not that I wanted to hurt myself, but I was just tired. Yeah. And I guess the heart attack was a reset for me. Oh. And when I had that heart attack, I didn't see God. I, I am a, I am a God-willing man. I don't know if his name is... I don't know if it's the, that's Allah. I don't know if that's God. Mm. I don't know if that's Jesus. I don't mm. know. Whoever that is for you, that's mm. fine with me. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's interpreted in everybody's uh, um, own tongue, mm. own language, um, for them to understand it. Do you know what that's I mean? Right. But I know there's some entity it in that, yeah, has helped me. Do you know what I mean? And 
I've got bare people of different colour in my life that I love. Mm. They're like my brothers and my sisters. Mm-hmm. I take a bullet for them. I stand yeah, in front yeah, yeah, of them. Yeah. If we're going to die, we're going to mm-hmm. die together. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, 100% what you're that, saying. Like, that's how I live my life. I box. I'm not scared of getting hurt. Mm. I, I push myself to the edge. I'm a qualified jet ski. Where does that tenaciousness come from? Tell me about that. Where th- in the nucleus of you does that come from? That's inbuilt in everyone telling me that I can't. My dad used to put me in the middle of a room, drink, like, almost like a public vocal battering of making myself feel unworthy of being a human or being a failure. And I then went on to um, take that, also being jumped, being kicked in by skinheads, but not hating that, but just embracing that of like, um, I've had to fight all my life to survive. I've had to fight through the music industry, um, I've had to look after myself. I've had to um, walk the streets um, when it was a time when you could have got attacked. Mm. Um, but I, 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 I fear no man, I fear nothing but God, you mm. know what I mean? Mm. But, that, but because I box, that type of discipline, I've got to big up, I've got to big up my, my boxing coaches, Madra Moore, I mean, that's Gavin. Spiritual um, self, man. Listen, those guys there, Jamie Robinson, Brett, uh, there's another Jamie um, at the Boxing Coach Club. Um, there's um, Big John. Bro, these guys changed my life. Like that in itself, I can't tell you how that makes me feel. It makes me feel emotional just thinking about it, mm. getting in the ring twice. Mm. When you get into a ring with a man, yeah, you know, like a lot of the time Crazy. you hear a lot of people with hot air giving it this, that. Yeah. There's always one or two yeah. or three or four. Yeah. Well, all I would say to them, I was in the car the other day and my mate was like, my mate was in a bad mood. Marley Ma, I love you, bro. I just got a hail Marley Ma. But even that, I was in, I was in the, uh, the car with one of my pals and he was having a really bad day. And I said, bro, just ignore that vibration. Mm. And what I've learned is I've got some very strong friends around me, my bona fide, mm. that on my council mm. that would tell me, wait until the dark clouds pass and stand in the light. I've got to big up my yoga teacher. I've been mm. doing that for two and a half years. Jade Crystal, we love you. I do yoga with Whoa. her. Mo- two and, like, and a half years? Two and a half years, Ashtanga. Bro, I, 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 when I had that heart attack, I've done everything that I've wanted to do since that. You say that tenaciousness or that, 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 that part of you that wants to live. When I, when I, I tell you this, <laughs> when I woke up in that, in that hospital <laughs> and they put my bed, I was in the, I was, I was in the recovery of, of the, uh, you know, like the crisis unit. I come out and um, you see how hard I'm gripping your hand? Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. I, Cause I've, I'm reliving that moment. Yeah. That moment when I woke up and that moment and, um, Rudimental, you know that tune that the guy they he lost his legs. Yes, yes. That was that time when that tune. So big up Rudimental because that tune really helped me to get where I needed to get through. When I opened my eyes, everything was so bright, just like that light. And I don't. And I think every day since then, for ten years, that brightness has just been my main focus. And all my people that guide me through and said, Ray, keep going through to walking towards the light. It's only then I realised that I was the light and that my in, my internal fears, my internal love, my all my inhibitions, my own darkness and demons, mm. I I will I will beat them and meet you head on. And later on, I want to be a life coach because it's... Sorry, I'm gripping your hand so hard. My father, I'm completely spellbound by your <laughs> But what all I'm saying is when, you, when you've had that amount of darkness that, that you've been inside... Yeah. And listen, I've been to some dark places. Some of my tunes are so dark. I believe I've danced with the devil many times because there is that light and dark. If you listen to Renegade Terrorist, mm. it's quite dark. Mm-hmm. But then when you listen to the light and listen, you listen to the piano and you listen to the vocals, that's the light. And when I produced with Gavin Nookie, I've got to hail you, brother. I love you. And my people, Floyd Dice, I love you. Uh, Pedro, I love you. Nookie, I love you. Um, Andy Pandy, Martin Ninja, like these people, uh, Antonio, Sandman, you'd know Sandman from back in the day (laughs) who had the label. 
and Jimmy from Labello, Mickey Finn, when I've been at my uh, Lucy as well, um, Macca's my good friend, when I've been on my knees, blood, like I and I and you have had to pick yourself up from nothing <laughs> to go again, <laughs> and that's what I did, and that's how I'm here today. And no one, there's no such word as no in your creative because I believe that. You're only battling yourself. Controlling I, your strength, though. Controlling, controlling that strength. I've done neuro linguistic programming, uh, NLP. I've done mindfulness. I got, I got to big up my friend. Um, um, he's going to kill me now, and his name will come back to me in a minute. Um, Mark Edwards. Uh, I trained with him. Really big dude, actor as well. Just r written a couple of plays. I've moved with a lot of different people, blood. Like. Even just Remember making that. myself feel uncomfortable. I got to big up my friend Faraz, um, who took me to acting classes when I met him at Kingdom Drama School. And we did three, two and a half, three years there with Ashley Waters. And now I'm at Mixing Networks. Now I've got an agent. Now I'm acting. And I'm like, sometimes it's hard to be in the room because I don't come from that acting, thespian, well, like imposter, educated. Almost imposter, like... Or, or no, not an imposter. I don't feel. I don't no. feel it's like an imposter syndrome. But I, you're with some greatness, I, I, and you're yeah, measuring but I, up. I believe. Right? I be, this is what I would do if I was in charge of of anything. Of and I've travelled around America. Got to bring up all my brothers and sisters from around the come world. On, you need to on. feed a community. You need yeah. to put back community centres so kids are not killing themselves. Yes, are not stabbing themselves. Thousand percent. You know, like oh, let, let, let's put some music um, uh, a little bit like Thames Delta. What they've done, the creative. Mm. You know, you can go there. You can do workshops, acting yes. shops, boxing shops. You can learn how to cook. That's right. You can learn how to. It doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, if yeah. you're brown, if you're Chinese. If you're gay, if you're straight, yeah. like learn how to work as a union, love people, yeah. put money back into communities, legalize where there isn't where country. there isn't hitches. Like there's always a you know in the fine print, it's going to cost you X Y Z to be a part of this membership of this. It's like no bollocks. They used to be youth centres. There, where are they? Happening in America, where the governor <laughs> yeah. they they legalized weed in that state, where they were selling the weed and where they were taxing them, they basically took a heavy tax. Each resident in that community gets three thousand pounds back a year huh? because they're feeding the community. They're building places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, take people foundational off the, shit. Yes. Take people off the street. You know, take the take the homeless off the street. Put. Put them into centres of rehab mm. so they don't keep reoffending, and then they can get a placement. They can become a workforce. They, can, you know, it's simple when you think about yeah. it. You know, a trade like whether you're a plumber, whether you're an electrician, whether you want to mend cars, whether you, whatever you yeah. want to do, whether you're a painter, whether you're a decorator, whether you want to make music, whether you want whatever it is that this country needs, mm -hmm. rehabilitate and train people. Yes. And, thousand percent. and then you're going to solve a lot of problems. Mm. Mental health in this is this country is at an all time low because you've got people controlling um, rehabilitation centres that don't even go to, down and see what people are taking. Mm. That fentanyl drug in beast. America, bro, is scary. <laughs> I actually cried the first time I went to America last year. I phoned up my friend Andy. And I was actually in tears on the phone. I was like, bruv, it hurts me so yeah, much. Yeah. You know, and I do feel it. I don't like, I don't want to see animosity. No. I, I don't want to see... Um, just apathy. Yeah, and, just I, and, and also, apathy. you know, big promoters, wherever you are, you've got a responsibility. Yeah. Because all the cheap DJs that you... If you're going to get... If you get cheap, you're yeah. going to end up with cheap. Yeah. You're going to yeah. end up with people not going to your yeah, dances because right. you've got no quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to have people that represent... That that um, that 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 you can teach the youngsters how to pass on that legacy because mm. they're not going to learn from themselves. No, nah. they're just going to trip over. And I believe that's that's the same. But yeah, the heart attack was a moment where I was like, right, huge moment of clarity there. Oh, mm. I'm going to break the cycle of unhappiness. That's mm. the first thing that I managed to do within my generation. <laughs> and a lot of people stay together. A lot of people are in destructive. Oh, that's uh, an interesting uh, destructive angle. relationships because don't forget when I did a lot of mindfulness and healing, I was part of the problem because I was the enabler and I allowed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that happens, I, I allowed yeah. them to take the piss out of me in whatever yeah. format. Yeah. 
And then I broke the cycle because I broke away. And well, I you said, turn no, a blind eye to it. That's enough. You turn a blind eye to it up to a point. That's the enabling well, you, see, you, ho- you love them and you hope that they're going to get better. Yeah. And it's almost like you see the good in them because you know the forces within them. Yeah. But, but unfortunately, it's just too dark. No, yeah, yeah. It's and beyond by that, you. And by that time, yeah. it's too late. So yeah. when I broke that... And even now, I'm still going through trials and tribulations of my own family because the knock-on effect of that ha- is immense. Yes, yes. But I believe we've got God in the universe and and and, and loving them in an unconditional way. They've got enough time to heal because they're mm. still in their twenties. You said gener- Yeah, absolutely. You you uh, you mentioned generational as well. What your generation suffers with. You see the light in not st- stepping away from that theatre and recognising what exactly? Because it's interesting you said the generational thing because I think... With I think gen- it was a little bit s- systemic for us because the, the racism of colour growing up, mm. so you, that's ingrained in you. Mm. Um but there's no need to have a chip on your shoulder with that. Mm. And most, a majority of us l- want to lead by example. Mm. We don't want to carry on of how dark our parents were mm. or how linear their vision was. Ours is more prolific and we're on the, pro- like, we have a wider vision. Mm. And I believe that their mistakes, but without a doubt, their work ethic has enabled us to, to, to push on yes. and to grind it yeah. out and the stiff upper lip and you get up, you dust yeah. yourself off, you go again. Yeah, 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 yeah. You creatively, everybody told me I wouldn't be able to do this, can't do that, mm. not booking me for this, not booking me for that. But you know what? I just wait, bro, because yeah. I know that God is good and I know something's yeah. going to come through. And I know as one door closes, the next one's going to yeah. open. Yeah. One man, uh, one artist is here, they do something, they leave you with uh, something. It's like anything in life. Mm. Someone's going to teach you something, someone's going to leave you something, mm. someone's going to hurt you with something, but that's even a lesson because that's, yeah. that, that's a way to go, well, I'm, I'm not going to go down that route. Have you ever done anything where you're leading on to that? Has there ever been a moment where you were so gutted that something didn't come through, but in retrospect, you have 10 years on or something, you'll say to yourself, that was a lesson. Thank God I didn't do that because it could have happened to that and that could have been... Yeah, 100%. Any... I didn't sign to a major. There you go. And now, my band, my integrity... Listen, my integrity for sound and my vision of what I have in, inside here, even with my band, I want to big up my band members, the original, because um, Blade Runner was in there By the first. way, that vocalist is killer. What's her name? Thank you, uh, Miss Claire. Claire. And also we've got... Wow. Um, uh, We've got Elisa on vocals mm-hmm. who done uh, some stuff. The latest tune mm-hmm. that I've done with nice. her. Yeah. No, um, big up Mr. Quest. Um, they're lovely people. Uh, we're finding our way with our own boundaries and mm-hmm. what, 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 how we can work. Because when you're all friends, bro, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's funny. I saw Marky from Cochin the other day. Nice. And um, he, he was at the uh, place. And you need to set out boundaries so you can work within those boundaries because it's okay being mm, friends, mm. but when it comes to the paperwork... Serious play. Yes. And, you, and, and, and you need to put those things in. And I'm happy. I'm working with good people. Mm. Uh, I want to big up Mike Stone, who's helped me build the band from scratch, rebuilt it three times. I want to big up Toddy. I want to big up Ben. Toddy's on drums. Ben's on bass. Uh, I'm on keyboards now. Yeah, you are. Um, so yeah. good and to I'm, see. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm Wow, we warmed up for Dr. Mika. Dr. Mika looked at me. And he's a musician, bro. I'm not a musician. I'm 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 a I'm I'm a I'm a start off musician yeah. and I, I I I interpret music. I wouldn't say I'm an out and out musician. Yeah, not I'm, a theorist, you're yeah, more I, I've got an ear for music yes. and I make a contribution. Yeah. Uh, uh, electronically, yeah, hundred percent. Um I, I'm a I'm an ele- electronic physician, if you like. Do you know what I mean? That I can <laughs> that I can listen yeah, to the music. Go. I can doctor it. I, I can make a tune. We can make a tune in an hour. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It's that quick. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I've done thousands of hours in the studios. You know, like smoking, unsmoking. I've been clean for ten years uh, now, and I feel the light. I feel everything. You don't drink. Now and again, I'll have I'll have a ladies' drink like Malibu and lemonade. Yeah, yeah. I'll have Cavozier on on my ride, and yes, I will take the bottle home yeah, yeah. and I will give to my friends at Christmas. 
<laughs> you know, sherry round here, strictly Malibu. <laughs> and these female drinks, by the way, you know, sherry's. I don't, I don't mind. I like things sweet. I'm diabetic type two, so yeah. I should really have things sweet. But little coconut Malibu, oh. actually, Frost, cheeky, put cheeky me, Bailey's, you know. Fr Frost put me on to um, uh, Cavozier and lemonade. Very refreshing drink, bro. Uh, Jack Daniels gives me a headache. Hennessy and apple juice. Not tried that, yeah, but when I have had Hennessy, it's given me a headache. Oh, no. Nice. Don't really like fizzy drinks, but yeah, Malibu and Lemonade, I'm, Malibu and lemonade, I'm That's partial. lovely. That sounds good. But nine times out of ten, man's shaking in the morning, um, bigging up Dr. Rachel, bigging up Navigator. Navi, um, Navi's day. a good, good friend of mine, like bona fide, mm. um, life changing. When, when that episode happened, a few people were really there. Rachel was there. Every morning, I've got to tell you, I shake. I take, um, uh, I put in a shake um, some spinach, some flat leaf parsley. Uh, I put ginger in there. I also put some melon cucumber, two tablespoon of chai seeds, which is omega three. Fill it up with water, and I drink about that much every morning. And then I share them the chai rest seeds. Of you have to like, expand, don't you? you have to no, give you just put it in the in the bullet shake, and you just oh, straight and it away. spins it, and okay. then just drink it whole whole neat. So you take notes on this. Yeah, rewind that list of ingredients there, and you know where you're at. That's what you should be. And you that know, and that, that gives you the vitamins and the natural things, rather than taking loads of pills. Yeah, because <coughs> excuse me. You've got to look after this vehicle. Yeah. A lot of people have smashed it, bashed it, even neglected it. I, I'm, yeah. I, 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 I fall into that category. And also, when you come from our... Well, when you come from our working class background, you know them mm -hmm. nuns mm -hmm. that smash themselves on the back? Yeah. Not good enough. I've uh, got to keep going. And, and or if I'm not seen, I'm not heard, and it affects you and yeah. all of that. Yeah. You've got to get used to like, actually, less is more. And all, a lot of my friends got signed and they're nowhere today. They yeah, haven't yeah, even got yeah, a legacy yeah. to yeah. keep going on. And I believe that that final wave will come. And also, I wasn't ready then. I'm ready now. I'm more ready now. I wanna, and it's not just about me. I want to help people. Some mm. people you can help, some people you can't. And I don't even take that personally now. If 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 that's your chosen path, then that's your chosen. Mm. You're not supposed to walk with me mm. on this. Maybe later on. You maybe can't. You can't cross the streams and what their their no. future and, is. And sometimes yeah. that's difficult, and sometimes that's frustrating because you can see the bigger picture, mm. but sometimes people can't. Mm. You know. And what all I've realised is I need to I need to do more me more what I'm doing. But the band has been amazing, mm. and that energy. Mm. I mean, bro, you as a performer, when I've come off the decks and I've had to host, because twice no MC showed, so I had to host the show myself. And after concentrating and playing and talking, I came off, I was knackered. Mm -hmm. I was like, it took me three days to recover. Of course. So even you as, as an artist that, that beatbox, mm -hmm. that's vocals, that so, does yeah, your yeah, thing, yeah. blood, yeah. I'll take my, so, I'm taking you, my hat off right now. <laughs> so because mad, that's it's, difficult. It's a mad PTSD after effect of like, yeah, it does take some time, doesn't it? And also, people don't realise that as soon as you've done the show and you go back to your hotel, yeah. you're on your ones, bro. No, you're on yeah, such yeah. a low <laughs> that you're, and you're, you're then um, locked off from the world of what you've just been going mm. through. And if you're on the road, you're on a singular. There's mm. no one to reach out to if you're six, seven hours away from home. It's quite mm. isolated. It, it's not all the fun that it's made out to be. Mm. There's there's pigs and troughs and you've got to deal with that. Yeah. And all the all the extras where drugs and and other devil business things are thrown at you. Yeah. You've got to be able to navigate yourself through there. Mm. And all the hang-ons, the best mates, the people that just want to mm. get bent out of shape for the sake of yeah. it. And that as well, you've got... They to, disappear as well, funnily enough, don't they? Have a well, time. you've got, again, you've got to be able to have a really good foundation. And that's what I've learned. Yeah. Marley Marl, Pedro... You All know, these people, ago, like, yeah. Floyd Dice, they said to, to me... To yoga, everything. Like you've It's got a foundation. Yeah. Build your foundation. Keep building it up. Moving with the right people, do what's good for you, do everything in moderation, and try and love and be kind to yourself. Because if you don't love yourself first, blood, you can't even begin to love anybody yeah, yeah, else, yeah, yeah. and you can't love anything that you do. Fix yourself first. Yes, Mr. Ray Key, thank you so much, my dear friend. More soon, hundred percent. 
hundred percent. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's, man. It's it's been an absolute We're pleasure. Here. We're here. Tea in the pot. Drinks in the fridge. Wow. If that weren't good enough for you, there's 500 more. Ray Keith inside the place. Big dub, come on. Uh, Killer Keller podcast, Outlet In was out of fashion, serves you right. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, people. You stay lucky, all right? Easy! Whoa.